Today's episode of Film Riot is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Riot, I killed Ryan, buried him in the backyard, and took over the show. What up? Welcome to Film Riot, the show that blah, 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 whatever Ryan usually says here. Okay, so I lied. I didn't kill Ryan. I did try to bury him, but I didn't pack the dirt tight enough, so he got out. The real reason you're looking at this less ugly face today is because Ryan is bedridden sick. Poor guy can't even talk. And then he has to fly to Florida. So instead of leaving you with no Thursday episode today and next week, we decided to do something special. I don't know why I did that. A little while ago, we started working on a new show called The Slate. We have a few episodes shot already, but haven't done anything with it due to time, so we figured we would show you guys the first episode. Now, this show would usually be around 20 to 30 minutes per episode, so we're going to show you guys the first episode in two parts. First part this week, second part next week. So, here you go. And I'll see you guys at the end. Was that good? Was that cheesy? Natural saying that. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, he has mad skills, yo. Uh, when he gets on the mic, he really busts the jam, am I right? Yeah. Other MCs be whack, I tell you. Drop it, drop it, drop it low. <laughs> drop it very hard so it maybe puts a crack into it. That's how hard you should drop it. All right, so what are we doing today? Use that. Uh, I don't know, I feel like this is the part where we're supposed to explain uh, the show. But I don't know how to explain it, because I think the show is just going to be whatever it wants to. It's obviously going to evolve. No, I know what it is. Like, there's a lot. If there's one thing I get from the online stuff that we do, there's a s small contingency of people who, like, seriously wish they could be a fly on the wall for all the candid conversations, yeah. the late night BSing, and that kind of thing. Exactly. And the weird tangents that you go into. And I think that's what the heart of the show yeah. is. Yeah. There'll be stuff, yeah. you know, we'll, we can talk about things that whatever interests us, which will have a lot to do with entertainment, new media. Let's film. do stuff we're not interested in. We'll do stuff that, that we hate, be... and it'll just be boring. <laughs> so, what are we doing today? Today, we're going to talk about our favorite movies of all time, but not the best. Right. Not like, wow, this deserves an Oscar, necessarily. Uh, you might think some will do, that's fine. But the movies that you could watch over and over and over and never get bored of, if it's on TV, you can't change the channel. Yeah. You have to watch those movies. You movies. see one second of it, and you're yeah, just and you're like, ah. and you're like, well, this is what I'm doing for the next 90 yeah, For minutes. you, it's one of the greatest movies. Whether it's Oscar-worthy or whether it was kind of stupid, that's fine. All right, and then so I made a list. I actually have a written list. I have list. a list, too, because I, my sure. memory is terrible. My list is I'm, bigger. I'm actually afraid to just lay them all out on the table at once, so I feel like we should go in the round. <laughs> oh, go around. That's go around. Right. We should go an inch at a time. time. Yeah. Okay. Wait, and should we introduce what... ourselves? Nope. Okay, so... This, one, this one's so, like... A, this one's... No particular order, right? Because mine's yeah. not in an order. No order. Mm -hmm. The Big Lebowski. Not, not on my list. Not on your list? Are you I've kidding me? I've never seen it. What? Uh, never seen no. it. Are you oh, kidding on. me? No, I haven't. You're the worst person who ever lived. I know. You're literally uh, worse than Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> No. Dang it! No, but uh, are you kidding me? Okay, first of all, uh, Coen Brothers are amazing. You gotta watch every single oh, thing yeah. that the Coen Brothers does. Um, the and Coen then uh, the other thing is, it's one of the few movies that gets much, much better once you get that, you know, plot thing out of the way. Like, <laughs> it is so much better on your second, third, and fourth viewing because that's when you start to notice the amazing character development. These right. bizarre, esoteric characters and the unbelievably quotable lines in the whole thing. It's one of the best movies ever made and uh, one of those time voids that the moment I see one second of it, it's nothing. Like, my brother one, and I will sit down and do nothing but Lebowski quotes for an hour straight. All right, I'll watch it eventually. Todd? Oh, me? Yeah. Um, again, in no particular order. And I kind of went through, like you said, the films that I want to watch over and over again, the ones that if, it, if I'm flipping through the channels and it comes on, I can't turn it off. Um, Raiders Lost Ark. Oh, yes. Wow. That almost made my list. I've seen it maybe 20 something times. I don't know, but still, if it comes on, I can't stop watching. Best Indiana Jones? Yeah. That's, I'd agree. Yeah. I don't know. Last I'm, Crusade no? so good. Though. I'm a softie for Last Crusade. That's so I'm not going to lie. Sean Connery. Yeah. Is just great. I mean, and, and it, there's a little bit of cheese. You know, he meets Hitler oh, yeah. well, and that kind yeah. of thing, but, uh, but not, not, uh, not too much. I don't know. And weirdly, I kind of dig the forgettable nature of Temple of Doom. Like, and what I mean by that is like the idea Doom, that it's so, uh, and I mean this God in a good way, the idea like it, this is totally what I would imagine just one episode in the life of Indiana Jones is. This, it's yeah. not a character defining experience, it's a, a character reaffirming experience. Agreed. Does that make sense? And it has a rough start and ending for sure. Karen Allen? It's great. Yes. Fantastic. Like Her and Mount? 
Huh? Short round. Short round? Oh, he was like, great. Yeah, no, totally. Oh, great. I thought you were harping on, on no, Shorty. No, oh, it was awesome. Dr. Jones! Hold on, Eddie, we go for a ride. <laughs> It's amazing. And now we're all racists. Oh. <laughs> it, it, it only took, what, a couple minutes? Yeah, great. We got great. Hitler and racism right off the bat. <laughs> and oddly enough, they both came from Brian Brushwood. I don't know. You thought, I just pointed out what I'm seeing. What are you talking about? Uh, mine's not surprisingly Jurassic Park on my list. Really? Uh, what do you mean, really? I, well, I don't know. I Careful, guess, Dane. Uh, we did, did, uh, okay, it's what? not even in your... I mean, I wouldn't put it in my top 20. I, I got a pain I mean, right like here, and my left arm is numb. Is that a problem? <laughs> we, Should we call you're somebody? actually having a stroke over this. <laughs> Dude, so the Spielberg's greatest films, one of the best blockbuster films of all time, in my opinion. It changed uh, movies as far as special effects goes. I mean, Cameron started leading the way with it, but Steven Spielberg, mm -hmm. well, not necessarily Steven Spielberg, but he, he burst the door wide open. And I still say that some of the CGI in Jurassic Park, some of them, Still, still holds up. It beats out a lot of the stuff that's even comes out today. See, I would I would totally agree with 100% of that. I would agree that it was a genre-defining movie, that it was an exquisite turning point in computer special effects. It was certainly a cultural phenomenon, uh, and it's got some quotable lines, but uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I've seen it maybe half dozen times, and I don't, like, if it's on, I'm just going to keep on going. Ah. Ah. But I wasn't, but you were younger than I, I see, I yeah, was in high school. I was school. 11. I was in high school. That's Keep my the pants difference. while watching it. You what? Story. I'm sorry? Pee in my pants. Did I was 11. Oh, it, all right. I had a big gulp, right? I'm like, you know what? Let me get the <laughs> biggest slushy that man has ever created. Like, I brought it in with a dolly, you know? And I'm like, it's cool. It's cool. Can you just hand that to me? And two people are like, here you go. And I'm just like, oh, oh, oh. You know? Because you don't want to have to leave during the Right. Camp. So now I have I have to go already. It's like, it feels like it's up to here, right. you know? The E-light is on, and it's like, must evacuate. But I'm like, no, no way. I'm not leaving this movie. And I'm already, I'm like closing my eyes apart. I'm terrified. It's my first, like, sort of horror movie type thing. Right. And this kid comes back from the bathroom. And the girl's sitting right in front of it. He's with them. So he comes up and just, bah! And as soon as he does, I'm like, sweet God! And then all the muscles just loosen no. up. And I was like, yeah, that happened. You know what? I'm not leaving. Finishing the movie. <laughs> I finished well, the movie. At that point, wow. you might as well. Yeah, so your next, your next pick. Oh. Pick uh, number two, Mark, Mark, Mark. Wood. Oh, this one's a this one's a no-brainer. Uh, James Cameron's Aliens. Ooh, one of so the greatest movies good. of all of history. However, what? I like the first one better. No, I no. Alien? They yes. not. No. Watch your back. I'm with Brian on this one. Yeah, no, okay. For, Bill first, Paxton? Uh, Bill Paxton. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. he was awesome. awesome. Game one over, of, man. One of the few times. Uh, well, well, that's yeah. true. Yeah. That's true. A couple of things about this. First of all, uh, Alien and Aliens are two totally different movies. Completely Alien different. Alien is a mystery suspense thriller, yeah. right? Thriller, And horror. then Aliens is a straight up like a war, war film, movie. right? Yeah. So you, you would pick the first one over the second one. For rewatch factor, I would pick the second. But as far but as, as cinematic, a film, yeah. I think the first one's superior. That's awesome. But the mm. second one is far more entertaining. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. I would rather watch the second one over and over again than the first one. Mm. Okay, my second one. It's not going to be a surprise. Um, one of the few movies that uh, not only what I watch every time it comes on, but I think it's better than the book that it's based on. Which never happens. Never happens. Uh, and that's Jaws. Oh, wow. How is Jaws not in mine? I thought for sure I mean, it was going to be not, yours. No, I knew there was a Spielberg film I was missing. Uh, are you kidding Hold me? Hold on, I'm mentally kicking one of them out. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do it quickly. Okay, I, I think I got the one I'm booting. Continue. Can I, uh, can I confess something? I've only seen Jaws, I've seen most of Jaws once, and that's it. Really? All right, well, it's a good show. I, I will watch Jaws if you'll watch The Big Lebowski. Absolutely. And then we'll okay. report Dude, it Dude, one of the greatest scenes in cinematic history, when they're all drinking. Oh, the singing story. the song. Uh, yeah, yeah, show me the way to go home. Yeah. But there I guess is they so ripped much off, um, little the stuff scene. in there that's not usually in a horror movie. Little uh, details, yeah. character stuff. It, it was half and half. It was like half character film. Half Do you remember horror. that's part of the reason it works so well with the, the the fake trailer with the must love Jaws? Did you ever see that? No. Where they they recut the tra trailer for Jaws to make it look like a Free Willy love story type thing. <laughs> no way. Where they're in love with this uh, and like at the end, the <laughs> Jaws goes out and he's eating the the guy with the harpoon and meanwhile singing like I believe I can fly. <laughs> he's going. Ah! And they're cheering for him. Oh, up. so good. My next one, I'm just I'll use my second Spielberg film, Saving Private Ryan. Okay. It's insanely yeah. long, and I think I've seen it like 
10 or 11 times, and it's like three hours long. Now, do you think that it's rewatchable to you because it's such a cinematic masterpiece and on a technical Probably. level? Because Probably. to me, it was emotional, exhausting, yes. and, and I, you know, I saw it maybe one and a half times, and it's like, I think I'm done. I've closed the no, chapter. No, absolutely, and there's a few parts in there that are just, it's hard to watch. And that was the great thing, because there's so many movies that do like uh, film, films like that about you know tragedies that have happened or war, and it feels like a movie. This film felt like he really wanted you to understand what they did. Yeah. You know what I mean? So and what it, it put felt you, like. What it felt like. I mean, put you in that shoes in that moment. And that was the first time I saw a movie like that where I really felt like the filmmaker respected what he was telling. It wasn't just trying to entertain you, but be like, this, it wasn't what, this is what yeah. it was. This is why you should respect I'll them. tell you, the stuff with the D-Day, when they're taking the beach and the camera going under the water, coming oh. out of the water, going under the water, I, wanted, I literally wanted to pull my hair out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, you, you just it's lose incredible. yourself in it. All right, I got one. Uh, this, I don't know which one to do first. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the one I feel more passionate about. Uh, May 1999. Right around the time I quit my day job, decided I'm going to be an entertainer, go on the road. So I leave Crazy Cubicle Land, having no idea if this will be a year-long experience or what. And uh, I see Fight Club. And it absolutely blows my mind. It speaks to me in a way no movie has. This rejection of the button-down Oxford yeah. shirts, you know, the cubicles. Oh, okay. Just a the guy goes on a self-destructive bender. Uh, stylistically, the music by the Dust Brothers. Uh, unbelievable. It may be my all-time favorite movie, bar yeah. Really? Yeah. D David Fincher's incredible. You know what else, too? That came out just after uh, The Sixth Sense. You remember Sixth Sense had that big twist? Yeah. There's a similarly big twist in mm -hmm. Fight Club, and yet, whereas The Sixth Sense, I watched that twice, and when, and when you know the twist is coming, it's, it's not like, nearly wah, wah. as good a movie, yeah. right? But Fight Club, uh, you know, with the, with or without the twist, it is phenomenal. Yeah, it doesn't from hinge on that. That's so true. Yeah. It does not hinge on that reveal yeah, at all. All right, your turn. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna go with uh, the movie that I think defined and began the the buddy film phenomenon. Two girls, uh -oh. one cup. <laughs> 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 that wasn't it. Well, no. Nope. All right, so what, what was your pick? Okay. Um, the movie that started, the buddy movie, was the first buddy movie that I can think of. It's it's an oldie, a little older. Oh, ah, hello. Arthur. Ah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank no, you. You're welcome, guys. You can take that. I have a stem. Oh. Oh, yeah. You got that I'll cute. You're, you're a little cute. There you go. Um, thank you. We should, we should actually say uh, thank you to our very, very gracious host here. Where are we? Umberto. Yeah, let's hear it for Arthur and Umberto. So it's yeah. here to give him a toast. Awesome. Thank Trip you, Arthur. Arthur. And Sal, the owner, who was and nice Sal, enough to let us, uh, us uh, right on. Let us where, the where, where is the place that people want to come check it out? Great food. Uh, great food. Uh, true Italian food. The owner, Sal, was actually born in Italy. Really? Uh, we're located on University Drive in Pembroke Pines, in between Taft Street and Johnson Street. So come on down. The place has just been newly remodeled. Uh, it has a, a brand new in interior. It's been here for years. But, and we're uh, literally always here. Yes. We, should, we, we don't should, go home. We, we, need, we need to put a little plaque on here, like yeah. filming of the slate. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Us. Yeah. Ryan does this ad all the time. I feel like I'm ripping him off. So I'm going to do it in a country accent. Domain.com is the place to go if you're looking for a get yourself a domain name or web hosting. Whatever it is you're looking to do, from hosting a blog or promoting yourself on the web, Domain.com is by far the best place to go. You want a domain name but can't decide which you want to be? They have a domain discovery system that will help you out. And just to sweeten the deal here, if you're using the coupon code FILMRIGHT at checkout, you can score 15% off your domain name and web hosting. So, if you're looking for a build presence on the web, do it through Domain.com. You know, now that I did that, I kind of regret it. Logo. So there you go, that's the first half of the slate. Now if we did this show, it would go on to have all kinds of guests to talk about stuff like being successful with internet video, how to use social networking business, and just a bunch of fun nonsense like the first one. So post your thoughts below, but that is it. Ryan will be back on Monday since he shot that before he got sick. Yada blada blada. And I'll see you guys next Thursday for the second half. Also, boom. What up? You know what to do. Mm. <laughs> he goes that way, I'm going this way. We have a few episodes shot already, but haven't done anything with it due to time. Why am I scratching my arm? <laughs>